It should be officially now three o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so let me just double check, make sure. Yep, it is 3.01. So good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Happy mm -hmm. self-care Sunday, ladies. Again, my name is Mia Bradford, if you haven't met me before, and I'm a proud founder of Beyond the Business. And I'm really, really excited to be on with you live today and welcome our special guest, Mrs. Lakeisha Woodard. Um, she is the founder of A Sister's Truth. She has an amazing podcast. If you have not listened to her podcast, you got you need to go do that. I mean, mm -hmm. every time, I'm like, I always try, hey, queen, hey, Candace, Candace is on. Ladies, if you're on, we want to know that you're here. We want to give you a shout out. And also, please um, go ahead and post any comments or questions that you have throughout the, throughout the broadcast because we want to make sure that we answer and discuss whatever is important to you. Um, so without further ado, I would like to um, welcome Miss Lakeisha Woodard on. Um, she is your sister coach. So if you're looking for a coach, you're looking for her. <laughs> um, she's amazing. You're right? Yes, you are. So um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. So today, Keisha is going to actually talk to us a little bit about her journey um, and how she has taken a mental sabbatical during this time. She's going to break that down for us. And um, before we go there, I'm sorry to pop out of the screen like that. Um, I want to just take a moment just to talk about what self-care is. And I did a post on Instagram a couple of days ago. Um, and to me, self-care is just really allowing yourself to pause and really learn about who you're, who you are and what you need out of life. Right. And, you know, when we get to that point where we realize, you know what, I had a long day, I need to go take that bath. Or when we get to the point where we're like, you know what, I'm feeling anxious. I need to pause and breathe. That is when you begin to respect yourself, which is what Dr. Gatling talked about last night. If you caught that live. You respect yourself and you really learn how to take care of yourself in the midst of um, not only trying situations, but on a day to day basis, because you you realize what your body needs. Yeah. So, um, Keisha, can you talk to us about um, first, if there's anything you want to share with the audience about um, who you are and then explain to us what self-awareness is? Sure. So like you mentioned before, uh, my name is Lakeisha Witter. I'm your sister coach and the founder of A Sister's Truth. So what I do is I teach high achieving women how to find fulfillment by gaining clarity on their purpose and create an action plan to pursue it. Because it's one thing to know purpose. It's a whole nother thing to operate from a place of purpose. And I through do this through self-awareness. And so my podcast that Mia talked about earlier, the name of my podcast is Living Her Truth, because one of the core values is, is my business in my business is transparency. So I'm very transparent with sharing my personal journey of how I went from victim to survivor of sexual abuse through self-awareness. So on my podcast, I have honest and transparent conversations with other guests about their self-awareness journey. And so this is an opportunity for them to come on and share their testimonies with everyone else, because I do um, recognize that not everybody has experienced sexual abuse, but that doesn't mean that you haven't went through some trauma or is going through some trauma in your life. And I just want everybody to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And one of the best ways to get you to understand that and believe that is by sharing other people's stories and testimonies. And so for more information on my podcast, you can just go to LakeishaWooder.com forward slash podcast. And so one of the reasons why, the main reason why I talk about self-awareness or I coach from a place of self-awareness is because like I said earlier, that's what really helped me. Because when I turned 18 and decided it needed to go off on my own, my goal was to become the example of success that my younger siblings needed to see. Because I'm the oldest and growing up in the projects, not that many examples in the projects, okay? We just didn't have that from the background that we grew up in. So I decided to become that example of success. But I ran into a brick wall really early on my journey because there was a lot of trauma that I needed to, to deal with. And so as I, you know, started my healing journey, I needed to get to know who I was, who Lakeisha is. And so getting to know who I am is how I came to the place where I am right now, where I'm able to embrace my purpose. 
I'm really specific, specific by saying embrace my purpose and not find my purpose because I truly believe we all know what our purpose is. If we believe in God and we believe God put a, a, a purpose, you know, on our lives, we have to believe that God is not going to give us something and then hide it from us. He's just he's just not going to do that. But because of our relationships, our upbringings, our personal experiences and all these things that we go through, we build these walls and these safeguards that tend to block our vision, you know, and enable us from seeing what's actually in front of us. So it's when we break down those walls that we're able to really, you know, truly embrace purpose. And so it was my self-awareness journey that helped me to, to do just that. And so that's why I coach from a place of self-awareness with my clients, because the answers that all of us are looking for are from within. We just got to take the time to really deep dive into our internal feelings, our internal emotions, you know, and resolutions and institutions intuitions in order to find and obtain the answers that we're, that we're looking for. And that's pretty much what the definition of self-awareness is as well, is really just digging deep and knowing your own internal emotions, resources, intuitions, feelings and emotions. Right. And being in tune with them so you can monitor your inner world. That's like the first half of self-awareness. The second half of self-awareness is also knowing how other people see you. And this is not necessarily in the in a negative light, right? People can see your purpose in you. They can see your strengths in you. Sometimes they see things that we cannot see in ourselves. And it takes someone to identify and let us know what it is that we're unable to see for us to be able to tap into it and operate from a place of purpose. Wow, that was an amazing explanation of self-awareness. Ladies, did y'all get that? I hope y'all yeah. were taking some notes. If you haven't grabbed a notebook and your pay pen to paper, um, you're gonna want to do that because um she's <laughs> just gonna drop some gems on you. I mean, she just dropped gems on me before we even started, so just get get ready. So um what I really like um, you know, when you talk about part one of self-awareness. Um, mm -hmm. taking that time to really understand, you know, your emotions, what's going on on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, ladies, this is the a better time than any for you to begin to explore that. And so, um, Keisha, what would you say would be kind of like the first step for someone who really hasn't had that time to pause and really connect with themselves? What What is the first thing you think they should do? The first thing they could do is to really take a mental sabbatical. And that's something that I done <laughs> as of late that I was telling you about that I wanted to share uh, with the audience. But the first thing you can do is take a mental sabbatical. You guys, we are in a position right now where I feel like, well, this is my personal, my personal opinion. I feel like God was like, world, stop. Just stop to give me the opportunity to really dig deep to stand still and to realize what's going on and what I need to take care of. Because when we are going, 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 because life tends to not slow down for us, right? But now we have the opportunity where life has truly just slowed down. So the first step is to really just take a mental sabbatical and take advantage of the opportunity. I know on social media right now, um, there's a lot of memes going around that saying that if you haven't started a business or created a, you know, uh, wrote a book or created some new idea or whatever, then, you know, time wasn't your issue. And I'm just like, that is just so harsh because some of us need to take a mental break. Some of us need to take a pause and do nothing. <laughs> we need to just sit down and just be still because, you know, our jobs can be a distraction. Our kids' basketball games can be a distraction. Happy hour can be a distraction. All these things can be a distraction from us really just paying attention to what's in front of us that we need to eliminate, eradicate, or just switch up altogether. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like you said, um, you really need to be, before you do anything major like that, you do need to be in touch with who you are and which, you know, like you said, embracing your calling. Um, it's not just something that you want to just jump into. So, but actually, let's actually jump into your mental, your mental sabbatical. So Keisha is really going to share with you, number one, what that is, you know, what she did during that or did not do during that sabbatical <laughs> and what she learned about herself during that time. 
Yeah. Good way, Keisha. Yeah. So with my business, the sister's truth is it's a virtual business already. So when the world stopped, if you will, and people started to you know work from home, some people just really lost their minds, right? <laughs> But me in my business, I got really, really busy because, you know, doing collaborations like this and, you know, virtual um, seminars, webinars and meetings, this is something that wasn't new. So a lot of people was just reaching out to me, you know, to do the different collaborations and to do like different speaking, you know, virtual speaking engagements. And then I was picking up clients like business actually picked up mm -hmm. to the point where I was literally running around my house like a chicken with his head cut off from six o'clock in the morning when I got up to, you know, probably like 1130 at night. It was that crazy, just really nonstop. And it was like that for like the first two weeks of, you know, of the coronavirus. It was like that for the first two weeks. So going into week three, I felt myself kind of slowing down, but about to just like rev right back up immediately because other things were starting to, you know, come my way. And I was just like, you know what? This is a perfect time to just like pause for a second. So let me just take a mental sabbatical, right? And just pause. And a mental sabbatical is really exactly what it sounds like. It's a, it's a time where you just, you know, slow down. It's a time for you to reflect. You know, it's a time for you to really to become even more self-aware. And it's a great way to practice self-care because there's no way for you to slow down, you know, and really just like get in touch with yourself and then not be self-care, right? This is a great way to have self-care. But giving yourself a mental break by doing things that don't require your mental abilities, right? Or a mental capacity for you to focus on. So you literally taking time to disconnect from reality. That's what I do. I disconnect it from reality. And my reality is like bills, the businesses, the pandemic, the issues, you know, with family, friends, mm -hmm. all of that. I just say, you know what? I'm just going to shut it down and I disconnected and that's okay. Now understand that it's just me and my husband. I don't have children. So I understand that it may be a little bit difficult for, you know, for parents out there, but hear what I said. I said, difficult, not impossible. It's still possible for you to take that mental sabbatical. You just gotta, you know, make the time to do so and be willing to do just that. So one of the things that I discovered while on my mental sabbatical, right, is the fact that I, you know, realized that there were certain people that was causing me to be overwhelmed. Certain people was causing me to be overwhelmed and not necessarily be overwhelmed because they're just pouring their negativity on me or their problems or the issues on me. But, you know, I hang around some really high achieving women because that's just how I am. And I hang around women who on a scale of one to 10, they're operating at an at a 11. But for me, I'm at a, like a five or a six. But because I'm, I'm hanging around women who are operating, you know, at, a, at the level of an 11, this is causing me to want to like catch up with them where that's not even where I am right now. I need to be at my six or seven and that's okay because mm -hmm. I'm operating in purpose and I'm being productive. So if you operate in, in purpose and you're being productive, then your seven is okay. But because my friends around me are operating at 11, I'm trying to catch up with them and it's making me overwhelmed. But taking that mental sabbatical helped me to realize that. So it gave me the opportunity to really slow down and readjust and refocus on what I needed to do and, and pay attention to my own pace and speed, because you guys, we have to run our own race at our own speed. And that's completely, that's a pretty okay. Another thing that I discovered while being on my mental sabbatical, my mental sabbatical was the fact that I wasn't really clear on what it is that I really want. I wasn't really clear. And let me explain what I mean by that. You guys, I don't have a bucket list because I have already achieved everything on my bucket list. Everything that I can possibly want, I've already have it. Anything that I've ever wanted to do, I've already done it. There is no goal that I have ever said that I have not achieved. I'm not saying this in a braggalocious type of way. I'm not. 
I'm just blessed, right? And I also understand what makes me happy, right? So for me to be able to sit here and say that I have everything I already want, that's a that's an feat in and of itself because most people can't can't say that. So mm-hmm. because I'm at this place where I've already, you know, succeeded and done everything that I wanted to do, I realized that it's time for me to evolve. It's time for me to reconnect with God and ask God and say, okay, God, so what's next? Where do I go from here? And because I wasn't clear on that at first, I was literally just putting things on my plate that was causing me to be busy. Now, business doesn't necessarily mean that I'm operating out of alignment, right? Because you can be busy while still doing stuff that's within your business if your per- if your business is purpose driven. But that doesn't mean that that's the season and what it is. That doesn't mean that you're in a season to be doing those particular things. So I was just putting things on my plate prematurely that I wasn't even necessarily ready for. Right. But taking my mental sabbatical helped me to get clear on that and just really, you know, reorganize some things, push some things to the side, really let me to see how in some areas I probably need to like strengthen my knowledge and my skills a little bit and really just ask God, what's the next step? Right. Because I just at this point, we we still working it out. (laughs) God and I, we're we're still working it out. And, you know, I know that's probably kind of crazy to hear, right? Mm -hmm. Most times, you know, because most times people, you know, think that if they're not clear on what it is that they want, it's because they haven't necessarily accomplished anything. But there are a lot of high achieving women who have everything, but just really need to figure out what's that next step. Right. Because that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for growth. And then um, another thing, uh, another discovery that I had while on my mental sabbatical was the fact that I was able to like literally mentally decompress, you know, literally get emotionally realigned. Right. So I can, you know, handle an unexpected financial burden that came across you know, that came across uh, my table, if you will. Now, before the sabbatical, I probably would have completely went into panic mode, right? But because I slowed down and I, you know, did a mental dump, I was able to be proactive rather than reactive as it related to this financial, this financial burden. And because I took a proactive approach, I was, you know, able to start devising, you know, an elimination plan to eliminate that burden, right? So that, so this particular financial burden doesn't come up again. And this is something that I think that we all, you know, should do, right? You know, to to take that mental sabbatical, to slow down and to realign with our emotions. So when a problem hits, because it can be a problem in, in any area of your life. For me, it just so happens to be a financial you know, a financial burden, but it can be anything, you know, in your life. It takes you being able to happen to slow down so you can really address the problem and eradicate it and not necessarily just treat the symptoms. Because I think a a, a lot of times we just treat the system, treat the symptoms because we're in survivor mode and I don't want us to be in survival mode. So, so yeah. Those are wow. the discoveries that I had on my mental sabbatical. Okay. So you just dropped so many nuggets. So I, I was basically trying to take notes and put them in the chat here. So let's go back. I mean, you just said a lot. Um, so the first thing I want to highlight, one, ladies, is that um, Keisha purposely took time out of her schedule, even though she was mm-hmm. running a business, has a full-time job and a husband, right? So she has responsibilities. But she said, I am worth it enough to take a step back from all of that in what capacity she could. She carved out some time and she made a decision to do things that don't require her mental capacity. Then from there, she took a look, an internal look at one, she realized she was in what I call the comparison trap, right? So many of us hang around. I mean, you know, we want to be. My old pastor used to say something like, you want to be the dumbest person in your circle, 
not like really dumb, but you know what I mean. You want to be around people who are elevating right. you and taking you to the next level. And so when you think about that, sometimes you might be like, well, dang, am I doing enough? Right. Because mm -hmm. you see, you know, like I, I was on the phone until like 1230 a.m. last night with my friend in New York. And when I tell you, I mean, this girl has been on TV. She's written books. She I mean, and I'll be I'll be like. A girl one day I'm gonna catch you it ain't today but 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 Nadine said something that was so wonderful she said if you operate in your seven fully it's actually an 11 so being true basically she realized that being true to who God created her to be that as long as she was operating in passion and purpose where she was then she's doing just fine that's where she needed to be because you know even though you have opportunities that may come your way ladies the Bible says all things are permissible, but not beneficial. Just because something comes to you doesn't mean it's good for you. It may be a good opportunity, but it may not be good for you. And then the other thing you said, I mean, you you put a lot out there. You said busyness does not mean alignment. And that goes back to my thing. Everything that's good doesn't mean it's good for you. Mm -hmm. And being aware, and you, this is where humility comes in. And this probably took a lot of humility for you to say this. Being aware of putting on your plate things that you're not ready for. <laughs> I mean, you know, people, yeah. I mean, people, I, I have been asked to do many things by many people. And I have said no, because I knew that either my skill set or my character would not allow me to do well at that. And you guys have, we have to think about our character, ladies, who we are internally. I know that I can't do things that is going to involve a lot of people that are not self-sufficient because I don't have the time to handhold. Mm -hmm. So if it's going to require a lot of handholding, I'm letting that opportunity go. I don't have the capacity for that. I know that that's a limitation that I have and it's okay. Um, and so any, any comments or questions? I say we got Amber's here, Manisha's here, April's here, Amber's here, Tamika, Catherine. Where, ladies, thank you for joining us today. Any questions? And and on my page, Kim is here. Hey, Kim. And Dijanae is here as well. Hey, Kim. Hey, Dijanae. Awesome. Awesome. So, ladies, um, so Keisha really just shared a lot of nuggets. I tried to capture them um, in the comments. That's what I'm looking at when I'm looking down. Um, and she, she really just dropped some gems on. She took the mental sabbatical. Um, Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dejanae. Yes. Just because something comes to you doesn't mean it's good for you. And so um, if you're watching on Keisha's live, we can actually see the um, comments. It's kind of cool. They come on the screen. It's like a TV show. How cool is that? I told y'all y'all need to call Keisha. She know how to do all. She's the plug. Um, and so, and, and then I see Mel here. She says, exactly. Yep. She, exactly. So, um, I basically wanted to go back to um, how long you took your sabbatical for. How long did it take you to kind of make all of these discoveries? I, I took a week. I took an official week for my sabbatical. And then when it was time to come up, come out of it, I mm -hmm. eased my way back into my normal stream of life, you know, normal for right now, right? Because what I didn't want to do is just immediately jump back into all of the busyness and then just everything I had learned be right back done. Everything I had, that I had just learned on my sabbatical. So I eased my way into it and easing my way into it was um was hard. It, you know, I think as of yesterday, I'm officially, you know, back on track, but I officially took a week off. And then that following week, I eased into it. So I just think I did things that were really pressing, you know, so I didn't get back into that trap of being super busy. Um, I focused on my clients. Right. But there were, you know, people that was reaching out and say, hey, how you, you know, is everything OK? Because I've noticed that you haven't been around, you know, things like that. You know, and I just told them what was what was going on. You know, I'm taking a, you know, I took a mental sabbatical and I'm easing my way back into it. You know, the old Keisha would not given all that information, but I did. Right. Because what I didn't want to do was feel pressure to get right back into everything that I was already doing because people are now reaching out and noticing and saying, hey, where are you or whatever? Because I think that's something 
that we fall into the trap in that trap as well. Right. When people really need us and, you know, they want us to come back before we're actually ready. But just by just letting people know, I ain't have to tell all of my business. I didn't tell all my business. I just told everybody enough so they can know. And people respected that. So, yeah. And thank you for sharing that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it is good to let people know who you care about. Like, hey, I'm taking a break. Like, um, Keisha has gotten a text from me before. Like, hey, I'm taking a phone break today. Um, yeah. You know, it's just yeah. like I can't do it because yeah. guys, believe it or not, you know, if you look at your screen time on your phone, I'm sure everybody's screen time has gone up significantly. And you really want to ask yourself, OK, has my screen time going up significantly? How has that benefited me right maybe sometimes we need to get off the screen so Dejanae is saying yes yeah, self-care means that you are dialed into your self-awareness absolutely Dejanae and just um and so Keisha can you talk to us about how okay so you took a week for mm -hmm. the sabbatical but mm -hmm. you have responsibilities how did you manage that I didn't because it's a mental sabbatical I just let things fall as they may, you know, again, I don't have any children, you guys. So take that, you know, do what's best for, for your household, but I didn't. So I planned out what I was, what I wasn't going to do. I wasn't going to do anything as it related to, you know, to my business. There were certain um, family members, if they call or they text, I wasn't even going to like pick up the phone or, or respond because I know that that would, you know, initiate some type of emotional, you know, whatever spiral and that's not what i was on doing that mental doing a mental sabbatical but the whole purpose of the mental sabbatical is to literally to release control and to surrender if i'm still trying to be in control of everything that defeats the purpose of having a mental sabbatical so whatever my husband did he just you know he just did it i let him know that i was on a mental sabbatical so the fact that i'm kind of you know recluse into myself and just taking time to myself i let him know that that doesn't mean that there's something wrong in our relationship <laughs> there's nothing wrong it's just that i just need to i just need to to take a moment so sometimes we just need to just let things fall as they as they may you know even with, I don't know, like I said, I don't have kids, but you know, some of my friends, I ain't gonna name no names, but some of my friends that, that do have children and they have spouses in the household, they have to control everything. It's like the spouse can't do anything when it comes to the kids. If you have kids and you have a spouse in, in the household, let the spouse take care of the kids the way he take care of the kids. If the kids got on mismatched pajamas going to bed, it is completely okay. If the babies don't take a bath at night, it's okay. Did they take a bath early that day? It's one day of not having a bath. Is that going to kill your child? Like, yeah. it's okay. Relinquish the control because if you don't take the time for yourself, you know, it's just, you're going to always be stressed out. Right? Because it's mm -hmm. always going always to be something coming up. So, just Relinquish control, whatever that looks like for you. All right. Relinquish control and just and just let go. You just have to do it. I don't know. It's not, you know, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. I agree with you. I totally agree. And April says that a sabbatical sounds amazing. So, ladies, so look, Keisha was bold. She was like, yeah. Oh, so Kim is saying something that you're not fully committed to. Okay. So I'm thinking what Keisha did, she was like, work, business, husband. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dealing with y'all this week, which is not this week. And that is completely fine. So to me, in my mind, Keisha, it sounds like you went to an island in your house with no cell phone. I did. I did. And just you, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, mm -hmm. and your reality. Mm -hmm. And you laid it all out however you laid it out maybe in a journal maybe you typed i don't know what you did and you just got clear on yourself uh -huh. uh, oh kim now that's a whole word right there kim just said if you don't take a mental and physical break your body will do it for you hello i'm guilty that's actually why i found it beyond the busyness kim because of exactly what you said i have been hospitalized um going to physical therapy for 15 years um uh, in and out of doctor's offices because I never took a break and my body will always break down and I was sick and tired of it. And people around me was experiencing the same thing. And I said, what is it as women of color that we don't stop 
take an inventory <laughs> of what's going on in here and in here, mm -hmm. that mental, emotional, and physical place mm -hmm. to recharge. And Dejanae yeah. is saying relinquish control to be able to recharge and offer yourself grace. That's a whole word right there, relinquish control. Because guess what? Yeah. If we was laying up in the hospital somewhere, everything would still go on. Period. Period. So it's, it's okay not, if we go ahead and take mm -hmm. a mental break, especially now people understand that we need yes. a break. We yes. need a break. Yes, people understand and people are, you know, supporting you with that too, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm like, how, you know, the way we look at this pandemic, we need to shift our mindset, right? On how we're looking at this. Because like I said earlier, for me, I feel like God said, world stop, right? Because when, when my, okay, so when my brother died over a year or so ago, I literally just wanted the world to stop because it was just too much going on, you know, because once he passed away, we still had to do like all of these things. It's just like, dang, can the world just slow down for a second so I could just process the fact that I just lost my brother instead of losing my brother and then immediately had to, you know, jump into these things. But I feel like now God has literally slowed Slow down the world to give us the opportunity to work on whatever it is that we need to work on. So why not take that mental break? Like, so we can, like Dijanae said, recharge and also give ourselves grace because that's another thing that came out of my mental sabbatical too. I was able to give myself, you know, grace for not being in a position to take on all of these extra things that I wasn't ready to do yet. It's, it was completely okay for me to do that. It is. It's absolutely completely okay. So Desiree is saying when you end up on autopilot, it's so key to disconnect from everything every once in a while. She took a week to and called it disconnect to reconnect with me. Oh, I, I like, like that. that. Desiree, I like that. Good. I like hey, that. Jessica Jordan, welcome. Thanks, Thank you. Yes, that was a good word right there. So um, Kim says every morning she asks her family, where are you mentally today? How do you feel? <sighs> they give her a number between one and 10. 10 is feeling amazing. Most days her husband, daughter, and her are at an eight. It's a good way to stay connected and let them know she loves them. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Kim has been married for, oh, for 25 years, I believe. And she wrote a book on how to have a happy 25-year marriage. So. What's the name of that book, Kim? Yeah, Kim, drop the name of your book in the comments. Yes, please do, because we got married people here um, watching live with us. Yeah, And ladies, if you have any questions, um, please drop them in the comments in the chat. I'm watching the chat here in the Beyond the Business group, and we can see the chat on Keisha's page as well. But I agree with Kim, and Keisha mentioned this too. The world slowed down for a reason. How many times have you said in your mind, like, man, I wish I could take a break. This yeah. is, for many of us, this is a gift. And we don't, some people mm -hmm. don't even realize it because I'm, mm, okay. I'm in a couple of situationships is what I'm going to say. Friend, stop. <laughs> not, not, with, not like a romantic situation. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm talking about business wise. Okay, okay, got you. <laughs> You know, I ain't got no man. I would have been told you that. Oh, okay. my goodness. I ain't got no man. Y'all ain't got no man. Okay. So I'm over here, you know, Corona. I ain't got no Corona Bay. No. So anyway, <laughs> um, dealing with other business owners is very interesting because what I'm realizing is that some people don't care they, they're so worried about their business that they're not even thinking about the health, mental state or emotional state of their employees. Mm -hmm. And it really, and Keisha, you already know what I'm talking about, but it really made me question whether or not I wanted to return to do this thing that I really love doing. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I can't deal with I understand everyone is under a lot of pressure and all the anxiety behind what's going on and you want to maintain your business, but you also have to think about um, have compassion for the other people who are involved in that process. You have to think about multiple things. And so, you know, for me, I, I was just thinking like, okay, is this something that I want to continue to move forward with? Because is it, I always ask myself, is this allowing me to operate in my purpose? And is this bringing me joy? 
if it's not aligned to my purpose and it's not bringing me joy, it got to go. It got to go. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Keisha, why do you think sometimes as women, we don't stop and allow ourselves to take that break? Why do you think that is? Pressure. Mm -hmm. Pressure. Because, you know, as, as a black woman, we're expected to do to do all things. We kind of can do all things. To we, be we are kind of <laughs> We can, we can, but um, it can be, you know, it can be pressure. It can be unresolved trauma that's causing us to overcompensate, you know, for things. Uh, I'll talk from my personal experience, you know, uh, doing my healing process, you know, it took a lot for me to step back a little bit, you know, and just focus on me as opposed to wanting to do everything for everybody, you know, because for me, I know how it feels to need help and to not get it. I know how that feels. So naturally, I want to help everybody. But I had to realize that the best way to help everybody is to first help myself. So once I, you know, really healed from the sexual abuse and, you know, uh, eradicated those negative core beliefs that stemmed from that, you know, from that abuse, I realized that loving myself and respecting myself and doing more for myself is how I'm actually helping other people. Because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't have the coaching business that I have today because so many people learn from you by seeing what it is that you do. You know, they learn from what you say, yeah, but they also pay attention to your actions, right? Mm -hmm. You can just touch and you know and do more for people literally just by doing what it is that you're supposed to do and operating from a place of purpose. So if you if there is some unresolved trauma you know, that you have been dealt with, I encourage you to to do so. And now is definitely the time, you know, because a lot of therapists have the, the telehealth, I think is what it's called, where you can teletherapy. do the, mm -hmm. telehealth. Yeah, teletherapy, where you can do, you know, virtual, virtual um, therapy sessions, yep. you know, so you no longer, you don't even have to leave the comfort of, of your home to do it. You can just go in your room, go in your closet, shut the door, you know, work it out. You ain't got to tell nobody. Nobody has to know, right? But unresolved trauma can can have us overcompensating, you know, in, in areas. And it comes up in our finances. It comes up in the relationships that we, you know, that we get involved in. It comes up, it comes up, you know, and how we deal with our children, you know, when trauma goes unresolved. So unresolved trauma, I think we need to start there. Well, you know, you just got me thinking, Keisha, because, you know, the conversation we have um, today, okay. right before. This oh, is the name you, of Kim. Uh, Kim's book, Building a Marriage, Put It On Your Boxing Gloves and Prepare for a Fight. Thanks, Kim. Thank you, Kim. You can find it on Amazon. Okay, go ahead, Mia. So, you know, you were saying um, that, I'm sorry. Lost my train of thought. Um, hold on, guys. It's coming back. It's gonna come back to me. Give me a second. No, oh, the conversation that we had before we got on the live. Um, you know, I had a situation and um I found myself saying to the person, because I was in a in a really like tight bind, right? Like it was on a time crunch, and I realized that I had made a mistake. Um, yeah. well, <clears throat> I just Anyway, whatever. It is what it is. And I said to the person, I was like, oh my gosh, I hate making mistakes because it had made me really, really anxious. And what I realized was that that had been ingrained in me since I was a child. Like I was not allowed to make mistakes. Like I would be berated and uh, verbally abused if I made a mistake. But that's not normal. Like that's not realistic because as a human being, every human being makes mistakes. Like that, it, you nobody is perfect like that's just not even a realistic expectation and so i noticed like if i make a mistake i still have that same feeling that i was traumatized with when i was a little kid and i was just like and i had to stop and pause and breathe through the situation because i was just like wait a minute i'm an adult now like it's this can be fixed it's not the end of the world i'm not about to get in trouble like yeah you know and so that trauma, that stuff is real. Like that stuff will haunt you for 30, 40 years if you don't really go and get that stuff taken care of. 
So, Absolutely. you know, I, I encourage you to really like look at your, um, what you got going on inside and how you're triggered by certain, especially obligatory things. So Dejanae, she says, society has conditioned us to believe that being busy is being productive and constant productivity means success. Mm-hmm. Oh, that is so true, Dejanae. That's yeah. why the name of my business is Beyond the Busyness because busyness doesn't equal productivity. You can do a lot of things, but yeah. that doesn't even mean you're getting closer to your goal, closer to your dreams. You could be doing things for people that don't have nothing to do with your purpose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's and and you know, being busy doesn't lead to success as well. Cause that's the case. It'll be a lot more successful people in this world. It'll be a lot more people who are who are happy and fulfilled. We lack unfulfillment because we're not operating from a place of purpose. When you are operating from a place of purpose, that means there is harmony in every area of your life. You're not just focused just on the business, but you're not taking care of your relationships. You're not just focusing on the relationships and not taking care of your business and your finances, right? That's a, a we need to take a, a, har- a harmonious, holistic approach, right? To, to our lives. And just because you filling your day up with a whole bunch of stuff doesn't mean, doesn't mean anything. You know, on one of my previous uh, podcasts, um, episodes, one of the guests, she said that God would allow you to win at the wrong thing. Ooh, I, I, I heard that podcast. She said God would allow you to win at the wrong thing. So just because you're doing all this stuff and you, you know, you think you're being productive or whatever, but for whatever reason, you still lacking fulfillment. That's because you operating outside of purpose. Mm, you better because, preach. I mean, just because you got that house and that luxury car, but you still not happy. Yeah. Operating outside of purpose. God, yeah. I mean, you know, God is the gracious God. He gonna let you get with you. He gonna give you the desires of your heart. But if it's out of alignment with the purpose that he has on your life. You better preach. You better preach. Ooh, that's a word right there, lady. So, I mean... <laughs> I'm kind of speechless right now. You get some time <laughs> over here in the watch party. But that's real right there. Like you in order to be fulfilled, we have to operate in our purpose, but the only way to embrace our purpose, which is what Keisha was saying, is that you have to be still <clears throat> enough to listen yeah. even when it's scary, ladies, cuz sometimes your purpose be so it could be so outrageous. You like, God, you want me to do what? Yes. It, you got to do it scared because remember our strength is made perfect in his weakness. So it's like, if you, if you can do it in your own strength, God is not in it because you don't need God. So you, it really has to be something that kind of scares you a little bit, you know? And so, yeah, that succeeding in the wrong thing is, is amazing. But let I want to go back to your um, comment real quick about harmonious. So a lot Mm -hmm. of times we think of balance, right? Like if I can balance my home life, my personal life, my social life. Yeah. It's extremely difficult to balance. If if anyone has ever ridden a bike, um, you know, you, you know, or you've done yoga and you've tried to do tree pose and you're balancing on one leg um, or you've been in a hammock or whatever, but harmony is a much, so I think it's, it's much easier to obtain because harmony means that, because of where you are when you're operating in your purpose sometimes you got to give a little more in your business and maybe pull back a little bit socially or maybe you're giving a little more socially and you're pulling back in your business so it's kind of like a give and take depending on where you are in your life at that moment so keisha can you tell us a little bit about what you're thinking along those lines or for harmonious yeah so you're absolutely right I don't like to say balance, right? Because when we when we say balance or or try to achieve balance, it usually put us in a scarcity mindset. It put us in a mindset of restriction, you know, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be that way, right? Everything that that we do should be in alignment with purpose, meaning that everything that that we do in every area of our life is working from is working towards one greater good. Right. So when you know 
what your purpose is, it's easy to operate from a place of purpose as it relates to your finances, right? Because mm -hmm. when you are operating for, from a place of purpose, that takes self-awareness, that takes understanding and knowing what it is that makes you happy. It takes understanding, you know, what your definition of success is and the fact that you're achieving your definition of success. I think to me, times uh, a lot of us, we are pursuing perception driven lives as opposed to, you know, purpose driven lives because we're trying to live up to other people's standards. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. But when we operating from a, a place of purpose, we are doing what it is that God has called us to do. So when it comes to our, our finances, you know, we are less likely to accumulate so much debt. Because I truly believe that one of the big reasons why a lot of us accumulate debt is because we're trying to validate ourselves. We're trying to feel a hole or feel something that we are lacking. But if we understand what truly makes us happy and we are, you know, doing those things, that's bringing us pure joy, then we're less likely to go or feel like we have to buy this business or this 4,000 square foot home that we really don't even need and, and use. And that's, that's not even a thing that makes us really happy. So that's what I mean when it comes to being, you know, harmonious, you know, um, taking a holistic approach, you know, to life. Because when you know who you are, right, and you identify all these things, that everything else tends to fall into place, right? Because because I know who I am, there are certain type of people that I'm not going to hang around. So there are certain type of people that's not going to be on my support team. I have a rock solid, you know, support team because I love and respect myself. And I know the type of people that I need to be around that's going to encourage my self-awareness journey, right? Because I know who I am and, and I love myself and I, you know, healed from my unresolved trauma. I was able to, you know, marry a man that I know for sure is not going to sexually abuse my kids, who's not going to put his hands on me, right? And who's not going to talk to me like I'm like I'm crazy because I resolved the trauma that would lead me to make those type of relationships. But that's me operating from a place of purpose. Because in order to heal, you know, in order to operate from a place of purpose, I needed to heal from that trauma. You see how how we kind of like just dives into other areas of your life? Am I making sense? You know, how purpose helps you to bring harmony in different areas of your life all together, as opposed to just, you know, trying to balance, balance it all. You know, the best thing to do is to operate from purpose, embrace your purpose, right? And incorporate purpose in everything that you do in every area of your life. Well, I mean, I totally agree with you because when I embraced my purpose and I got clear on what I wanted and what I did not want, it became really a lot easier for me to say no. Because yeah. if yeah. stuff wasn't in alignment, I'm like, well, this is not a part of my purpose and plan. Right. Um, yep, and Desiree, right. she says she agrees with Harmony. So it's easy for me to look get an opportunity now that comes my way. And it can be a great opportunity, but I can be like, you know what? Mm, this is not really aligned with where I'm trying to go right now. This is not really, you know, um, in line with my brand. Because I don't, you know, because people still say, oh, well, Mia, you're really busy. But the things that I'm doing bring me joy. And it may it may look like I'm always doing something, but that's not the case. There's always behind the scenes that people don't see. You know, like every time I'm taking a nap or, or taking a bubble bath and whatever, reading the book, I'm not posting about that. Maybe I should yeah. so people will not think I'm busy. <laughs> um, but I'm like, no, I'm a lot more calm living here than I, when I was in New York City. Now, I was really busy when I lived in New York City, like, frivolously um and all it did was put me in hospitals and doctors offices but i haven't taken any pharmaceuticals in over three years i got real clear on my purpose and my vision um i only practice holistic wellness and i live in harmony like i actually know how to prioritize because that yeah. harmony piece is knowing how to prioritize knowing when you need to put a little bit more effort in at work or knowing when you need to step back and go home on time. 
Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's, it's as simple as, okay, I worked my eight hours, I'm going home and I'm going to go work on my dream of owning my business or I'm going to go spend time with my kids because they're only going to be this age once. So yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's harmony to me is knowing what mm -hmm. your goals and your purposes and then aligning your schedule, your resources, your time, yeah. your talent yes. with where you're trying to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I, and and I think most people don't do every area of, of life. And, and let me just name some of the areas of life. That's health, health and wellness. That's, you know, mental wellness as well. That's your career or your business. That's finances. That's relationships, both romantic and platonic. That's the environment that you live in. Okay. Mm -hmm. That family, that's personal development. So those are just some of the areas. So when I say areas of life, those are the areas that I'm that I'm talking about. Because I think most people, when we, I mean, do people still set New Year's resolutions? Do people still do that? So when people set New Year's resolutions, they'll set a resolution in one area and don't take into account, you know, how the other areas would affect that particular goal that they set. And that's where the problem, you know, comes in. That's why most people, I think, you know, don't necessarily achieve their goals because they set a goal in one area and don't, you know, figure out how that's going to interact with all the other areas as well. That is a great nugget um, because that is accurate. I have goals. And uh, um, thank you, Kim. And um, April says your life should reflect your harmony. And Absolutely. I, and I, I, and Absolutely. I, Yes. And, and, and it will automatically reflect your harmony. If you operate from a place of purpose, it will automatically reflect that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. And I mean, I do exactly what you said. When I set my goals, they are all, um, it is a financial, spiritual, yep. um, relationships. Every area has a goal. And like you said, you have to think about how one thing is going to impact the other. Yep. And map it out. Like, when are you going to do it? Because, you know, people another this is a whole nother tangent but whenever you set these goals first of all you want to have smart goals because it's one thing <clears throat> be healthy is not a goal don't don't throw the shoe at the thing but it's not <laughs> because what does that mean what does that look like how do you know yeah. if you achieved being healthy you can't count what you don't measure so you can't measure be healthy, but what you can measure is, you know, I want to lose 10 pounds. That's something you can measure. I want to eat vegan meals three times a week. You can measure that. I want to work out four times a week. You can measure that. That's how you can see your progress. But be healthy is very vague. Like, I mean, how do you know? Like, did you do it or not? So um, I know we're, we're kind of uh, getting towards the end. And so I didn't know if you have any um, last minute remarks you wanted to make before we talk about your awesome gift for the challenge. Oh, that's right. My awesome gift for, for the challenge. Yes. So let me uh, just give a couple of tips for a successful mental sabbatical. That's cool. Yes, please. All right. So the first tip is to be selective in what you will and will not do during your sabbatical. All right. So be selective. Number two is to set boundaries. OK, communicate those boundaries with your, you know, with your friends and your families. OK. And then you have to, you know, activate those boundaries. <laughs> you have to, you know, stick to your boundaries. And then the third tip I want to give is to set a specific time frame for your sabbatical ahead of time before you actually take your sabbatical, you know, tell yourself, OK, I'm going to take it a sabbatical for two days, three days a week, however long, be specific and plan out ahead of time. And then the last tip is to just stick to it. Cause I know it's hard. Like once you jump into the sabbatical, it can be hard to stay in it. I ain't gonna lie. But if you say if you say that you're gonna, you know, do a mental sabbatical for a week, I need you to stick to that sabbatical for the week. Unless, of course, some, you know, there's a family emergency where you just really have to come up out of it. But if nothing, you know, pressing, uh, nine one one type level thing that happen, then stick to your sabbatical. Awesome. Awesome. So I, I actually wrote all those um, tips down in um, in the watch party. So if you didn't get those, I, I wrote them all down for you. So those are fantastic tips. 
So one thing um, that Keisha said that's crucial in these tips is communicate, communicate, communicate. Because anytime I'm about to go ghost, I tell the people who are closest to me. Because I don't want anyone thinking, you know, I've gotten in trouble for not responding to people because I have taken sabbaticals in the past <laughs> and I just went ghost. And people have gotten extremely upset. So now communication is the key to life, especially with relationships. Um, so yeah. please communicate, hey, I'm taking a break. Yeah. I'm not trying to ignore you. Um, and just kind of, you know, let people know. I, I had to learn that. I had to learn that the hard way too, because I would get ghosts and not tell anybody either. And my friends would get on me all the time, like don't, like don't do that, because they they're worried, you know. So yeah, so communication is definitely key. Please tell your mom. <laughs> my mother would just show up over here. And I'm looking now because they they my parents showed up yesterday to my house. I wasn't even at home. My mom's like, I'm I'm outside. <laughs> So please communicate to your mama or whomever <laughs> is, cares for you. Right. Um, and so um, I just really want to give you a shout out too. So Keisha, as you all know, is one of our sponsors for the 21 Day Spring Into Self-Care Challenge. And so Keisha, can you, first of all, thank you so, so much for You're sponsoring. Welcome. You are You're the bomb.com. <laughs> and I want her to tell you about the awesome gift that one of you will be receiving. Yeah, so <clears throat> I don't even know if I mentioned it earlier, but I am an author, so I'm giving away one of my books. And the name of my book is 31 Days of 31 Days of Truth, Manifest Your Passion, Power, and Perseverance. And so I wrote a book for 31 days. Each day I talk about a different common life issue that we all go through. And I give you tips and tricks on how to turn that issue into a triumph so my book is really easy to read it's really straight to the point because i know for a lot of us me included raising my hand this is re the reason why i wrote the book this way is that when we are experiencing something we just want to get straight to the answer just just give me an answer right so i left off all, all of the fluff and the hot air and i'm giving you tips and these are just things to help you to take action like immediately. So the way I designed my book is for you to read it from day one all the way up to day 31 in order. And then it's one of those books that you can go back and read <clears throat> depending on what it is that you're going through. You can spot read, you can go to a particular day and read that day in order to do that mindset reset, you know, that it is that you need. And then at the end of each day, I have a moment of truth right your moment of truth because this is a way for you to actually journal and write down what it is that you learned for the day how are you going to take you know that truth those tips you know that you've learned and incorporate them into your life right because it's one thing to read something i'm gonna need you to take action i don't want you to just read my book like i actually want you to take some type of action because nothing would change if you don't put forth an effort so by having a little space at the end of each chapter for you to actually write down your thoughts, it's my little tricky way of getting you to actually, you know, take action. Because I feel like once you write, write it down, it makes it real. <laughs> it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to ignore it. And so it's, it's another motivating factor for you to actually take action. So one lucky winner, we get a copy. We get a copy of my book. So Tony says, hi, beautiful and brilliant lady. She said, that is my New York way of being as well. She loves writings that get right to it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> so Tony, don't forget to post your daily self-care update. So perhaps you may be one of the winners. You never know. So keep posting in the group. Awesome. So ladies, um, if you haven't already, I also have um, a giveaway. So if you haven't gone to beyondthebusiness.com to download your free self-care guide, you can definitely do that. Yep. Thank you. Me Thank too, Kim. <laughs> oh, before I talk about your free self-care guide, um, we are doing a book club right now. Actually, it's on Mondays. If you go to the event section of the well, Beyond the Business last, group. This Monday is the last Monday, though. Oh, this is the last Monday. It's oh. the last Monday. But we well, talked we about it doing it for, for May, for the group. Yeah, we'll do it again next month. So we'll have a book club next month. And um, I'll post the link to the book um, when I said it. I'll post the link to the book. Yeah. 
So definitely join the book club. It's a very easy read. I will read it every morning before I went to work. It doesn't take that long. It's a couple couple pages per chapter, and then you do your moment of truth. And that's where you get clear on what it really means to you. So I've bought the book for multiple people. I bought it for my sister. My sister bought it for somebody else. Like it's a really, really good book. It's very practical. Um, lots of words of wisdom. And again, like Keisha said, it's something you can go back to time and time again. So this is my second round with the book. Um, so please, um you're welcome, friend, because you know you're the bomb.com. I told you you can call me. <laughs> So, um, you know, I do random singing. Please excuse me. Um, but I wanted to also let you guys know to get your free self-care guide. Go to beyondthebusiness.com. Click on the link that says free 21-day self-care guide. Go ahead and get your free guide. Um, it's going to give you some ways that you may not have thought of to incorporate self-care. Some things you can do right now because we're not seeing people, of course. But there are some things that you can do for free at home um, to amp your self-care or ramp it up thank you keisha yes so go there and it'll say free uh 21 day self-care guide and you can just put your email in and you'll go ahead and get that for free so um ladies if there's no other questions um we thank you for joining us um follow keisha tell us how to follow you Yes. Yeah, so you can follow me here on Facebook at Lakeisha Woodard. Um, you can also go to Living Her Truth on Facebook as well to follow my podcast because I do video and audio versions of my podcast. And of course, my podcast is on, you know, all of your favorite podcast platforms like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. And I feel like I miss one. I always, I feel like I always miss one. But whatever your favorite podcast um, episode, you can find me there, Living Her Truth. And then you can find me on um, Instagram, Twitter at Lakeisha Woodard, LinkedIn, Lakeisha Woodard, and YouTube at Assistance Truth. Wow. Yeah. She's so official, y'all. I follow her <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I do. I don't know. I'm like the Lakeisha Woodard fan. I'm like a Lakeisha Witter fan and a Ty Abram fan. You guys will make Ty Abrams look like I'm like a fan. Oh, and an and April fan, too. Y'all got to meet April. She on here somewhere. April, hey, girl, hey. Hey, April. <laughs> so um, so for me, you can follow me on Beyond the Busyness on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I'm going to be going live tomorrow in the Beyond the Busyness Spring into Self-Care group. And I'm going to be talking about developing your morning routine. I'm going to go live at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, 8 a.m. Um, Eastern, and if that's like 5 a.m. Um, Pacific Time, but you can catch the recording. But Tamika is going to be awake. Tamika, I know you're on here. Yes. Thank you, Tony, for the heart. So, um, Tamika, I know you're going to be up anyway, so you can join the live. <laughs> Look, I know, I'm like, I know your life. Um, but yeah, so for those of you who get up that early, please join me. I'll be going through my morning routine. Um, Y'all gonna see how I really wake up in the morning. I will not look like this. <laughs> so just brace yourselves. <laughs> so funny. Yes. Thank you. See, Tamika said she gonna be there. You know, that's five o'clock in the morning. Now that is my girl right there. That's dedication. That she is dedication. She's going to be up. She's going to be up. That means I got to be up. You better get up. I better get up and do my morning routine. So that's what we're going to be doing live tomorrow um, in the Beyond the Business Spring into Self-Care group. And you can find the group from the Beyond the Business Facebook page. And just click visit group and then answer the questions and you'll join the group. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much, Keisha, for your words of wisdom. I took a lot of great notes. This was fine. Thank you. I, know I always have a good time with you. You know. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, but um, really, like, if you can give me one of those hair wraps, see, I'm saying. <laughs> I gotta give me. I gotta give me some more. I didn't fell in love with hair wraps during the pandemic. Okay. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna try to wash my hair today. So hopefully I don't scare y'all tomorrow morning because I haven't washed my own hair in years. So we don't know how this is going to go. So pray for me. It's called Self-Care Sunday. So I'm going to try to care for this hair on my head. <laughs> Somebody gave me a heart. Thank you. Because I need a lot of prayer, which I need to do. Too bad you can't put praying hands up because I need prayer. If y'all knew how much hair I had on my head, y'all pray. 
That's what y'all do. Mm-hmm. Y'all would. Well, I love yep. your girls, though. Well, thank you, girl. I don't know if I can achieve that, though. Now, that'd be other people work. <laughs> that, that ain't me. That ain't me. Hey, Tosh. Hey, girl. Well, we wrapping up now, Tosh, but you can. we're going to put the replay so you can watch the replay for sure. Mm-hmm. All right, ladies. Well, have a wonderful rest of your evening. I'm going to go take a nap now. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for joining.